Ooh, there seems to be something we've never used before on this rig. Oh yeah, right there, in purple. Oh, there we go, the QHY 533 monochrome. In this video, we'll put this affordable Astro dedicated camera to the test from our Bordel 9 backyard. We'll use our basic beginner 7 nanometer filters instead of our fancy 3 nanometer ones and see how the camera performs when imaging a nebula. Be sure to go through our written review where we go more in depth and where you can download raw data taken with this camera. Welcome to our review video about the QHY533M, which is a monochrome 14-bit camera uh, with 9 megapixels and a pixel size of 3.76 microns. Wow! The reason this camera exists is because of how well received the IMX533 sensor was. It has a high sensitivity, it has low readout noise, no amp glow, and most importantly, a fair price. Nice. So we've seen a ton of people uh, on social media wondering if a monochrome version of the IMX533 would ever come out. It is really nice when you see that companies uh, actually listen to uh, what you guys want and come up with this beauty here. So here it is, the monochrome version of an IMX533 sensor. We also received a filter wheel, which is the QHY CFW3SR. And Fancy name. <laughs> And it is really cool. It's super lightweight and it's perfect for this camera. And it is definitely night and day when it comes to our other filter wheel, which we have on our other camera. And that's because yeah, it's it's huge. It's an XL. So like the difference on, on this is like wild. Yeah. So we unboxed uh, both the camera and the filter wheel in a previous video. So be sure to go watch it. Um, but let's go quickly over what's in the box when you buy the QHY533M as well as a filter wheel. So in the camera box, you get the QHY533M, you get a power cable with a power brick, a power cable extension cord, a USB 3 cable, a desiccant, some adapter rings with screws, and if you get the uh, filter wheel as well, you're going to also find in the box uh, the filter wheel itself, a nut adapter, a USB 2 cable, a 4-pin cable, and some filter washers and screws. Wow! So I'm going to save you some time. Uh, if you never used a QHY filter wheel before, uh, let me grab it here. So you get two cables, like I said, you get a USB 2 cable and you get a 4-pin cable. This here is a 4-pin cable. So I suggest you don't care about the USB cable, just leave it in the box and only use the 4-pin cable. Uh, I'm saying this because you, you have to make a choice. You, you, know, you have to pick a cable uh, to use. And I feel, I've tried both, uh, and I feel like the 4-pin the cable is just easier to use. So this cable just connects from the camera to the filter wheel, and that's it. Whereas if you use the, uh, the USB cable, you will have to connect the USB cable here on the camera, uh, oh no, sorry, on the, uh, on the filter wheel, and you have to connect the other end on your laptop. So it's like another long cable that's going to be dangling around. And also, if you, I think with this filter wheel, it's not an issue, uh, but with our XL filter wheel, uh, when using the USB cable, we also have to use this one no matter what uh, for the power, because the, the, the filter wheel is very power hungry. Uh, I guess the, actually the, the XL one. But yeah, just make a choice and I think just use the 4-pin cable. Uh, it's just much easier. Now, before you can actually image, you'll have to grab a small like pin or small like thin object and click the button that's like deep in here. There's a hole here. But why? Just click it and you will see the light turn uh, either red or green and you want the light to be uh, green. So turn, on, I mean, click it until it's green. Uh, green is going to be uh, the 4-pin mode, whereas red is the USB mode. So, if What you would use... happen if you didn't do that? Yeah, if you're in the wrong mode, uh, for example, if you're in USB mode and you're using the 4-pin cable, uh, you won't be able to connect on your laptop. So, uh, or you might be able to connect, I'm not sure, but actually... It'll cause sure. trouble! So yeah, be sure you're in the 4-pin mode when you're using the 4-pin cable. And that's the only cable you need, so that's great. Now, before you use a filter wheel and, um, you know, actually image, you need to put actual filters in the wheel. So, to be honest, this was not too difficult, but it was definitely frustrating. 
And the perfect words I would use to describe this process would be unnecessarily difficult. Um, I feel like it could have been much easier, so I was a bit annoying, uh, to be honest. Okay, so now I'm supposed to remove this plate here and attach this plate on the filter wheel and then using these holes here I can finally attach the camera to the plate and therefore to the filter wheel and finally image. So to attach the camera I'm supposed to remove four screws. Uh, one is here, one is behind this filter here and two on top. And it's really really annoying because there is no way to reach these two top ones uh, as you can see like behind this middle here so I have to remove the entire plate that's really really annoying I mean why is it so difficult seriously so it took a while uh, just know that anyone can do this it's not that hard once again it's just a bit annoying so here is the camera attached to the filter wheel it feels very sturdy and well built and the cable you see here once again is a four pin cable So we imaged twice with the QHY533M and you know, at this time of year, there's not really anything cool in the sky and we were lucky enough to still have Orion there. So that's what we went with. Um, it's just a lot of galaxies, it's galaxy season. So I should probably mention this, this camera, the unique thing about it is the square sensor. So some people hate it, some people love it and some people like us don't care about it. So. <laughs> uh, so for Orion here, we had to make sure beforehand that we had a nice square framing um, before we actually aimed at it. So we had no issue with drivers and all that. It was a very smooth night. Sadly, Orion went, uh, went behind the trees after like two and a half hours. So we were only able to gather two hours and some on this target. And you know, with such little integration time, we didn't really expect anything crazy. I mean, we were shooting from our backyard in a Bortle 9 and with seven nanometer filters. So, you know, no expectations there, but it did come out really, really nice and very, very clean. So we were happy about that. By the way, this blue Orion Nebula is like kind of out there, but this is what you see when you do the Hubble palette after you remove the green. So yeah, we yeah. did use the show combination and it looks different, but it looks cool. Show? You mean SHO? I say show, <laughs> some people say SHO, I, I don't say know. I say SHO, okay? <laughs> oh, we're about to have a triangle square gang again. All right. Okay, before we talk about our second image, let's quickly go over the general specs of this camera. We do have like the full details, so you can go to our written post about it to just, you know, find out everything. So some of the key points uh, about this camera is of course the sensor, it's an IMX533. So it's a 14-bit camera. The pixel size are a nice 3.76 microns. There are nine megapixels, uh, which we're going to talk about just in a few seconds here. Uh, I know it doesn't sound like much, but you'll see what I mean. Uh, and then you also have no M-Glow, which is great because some other cameras have M-Glow, which is very annoying, but this one has no M-Glow at all, which is great. Uh, it has a pixel array of 3008 by 3028, which is a perfect square almost. So this is why the, you know, the frame, I mean, the, the field of view is going to be square because of the yep. pixel array. It has a dew heater uh, included, which is great. And lastly, um, it has a weight of, I mean, it's pretty lightweight. It pretty is lightweight. about 845 grams, which in pounds equals 1.9 pounds. For our American folks, because everybody does everything in kilograms. And in case you were wondering about the uh, recommended gain and offset, uh, we asked QHY, and just so you don't have to waste any time looking around on the internet, the uh, suggested gain for this camera is going to be 76, and the recommended uh, offset is going to be 35. 76, 35. You're welcome! So you might say that 9 megapixels is not really much, but, you know, for astrophotography, megapixels are not the only thing that matters. They mostly matter if you intend to uh, print out your images on large formats. So if you plan to really get huge prints of your uh, pictures, then this might not be a good fit for you. Uh, because if you get uh, you know, an image that's too big, then the 9 megapixel will make it appear a bit blurry, a bit not clean. So this camera will be great for small to medium prints. But once again, if you plan to get like huge prints, like for the whole wall, maybe pick a different camera. 
with no megapixels. So, what about the price? Oh yeah, the price. There are two versions of the QHY 533 coming out. Uh, first is a color version, which is going to cost uh, $959 in the US. And the monochrome version, so this one here, no, here, <laughs> which is going to cost um, $1159. So uh, it's actually a pretty good, pretty pretty good price yeah, for pretty monochrome fair. camera. And then it's also good to note that the, the you don't need to buy any additional like accessories or things for the color version of this camera. Um, but if you're getting the monochrome, you are going to need uh, two additional pieces of equipment to use the camera as intended. Yes, yeah, so you will need, uh, number one is a filter wheel. Of course. Uh, right here, which I believe costs uh, $279. And second, you will also need, of course, filters. So uh, LRGBSHO filters, so that's seven filters. We recommend not breaking the bank on the filters. Get like big enough filters. Seven nanometers is fine, is a, the most affordable ones. And you will need 1.25 inch filters. Uh, the filters we used for this camera uh, Are, were, yes. yeah, were like our old uh, CW ones. And they're like, um, I think in total it was like 600 bucks, I think, for all the filters. Mm -hmm. So yeah, not too pricey considering uh, this hobby. So all in all, you can expect to pay $9.59 for the color version of the QH5533. And um, you can expect to pay about $2,011 for the monochrome version. And that's assuming that you don't already have the filter wheel or a set of filters. Yep, we did the math for you. No You're problem. welcome. <laughs> So on the second night, we switched out our scope for the larger refractor and imaged the only nebula we could think of that could, would not go behind the trees. So that's going to be M97, the Owl Nebula. So M97 is a tiny planetary nebula that's close to the Big Dipper. And it's actually a really good target for this camera because of the square sensor and the pixel size. So that allowed us to get a nice close-up view without having to crop too much. Now, right before imaging, I actually had issues with the drivers because I hadn't used the Nook on the refractor for a long time. And so I luckily, you know, because QHY is in China, uh, they were just starting their work day. And so we were able to get in touch with our support team really fast. And they actually remote accessed my Nook uh, and were able to fix the issues in just a few minutes. Isn't that amazing for once astrophotography works because it's at night, but it's daytime yeah, somewhere else. That was lucky. This was the second time having to contact uh, their support over the years. And uh, I have to say they've been awesome every time. So thank you, uh, QHY support team. I can say they're very great. So the night was good and we didn't really care about the angle of the camera because the target is so small and, and round uh, and the sensor is square. So I mean, if a square in a circle, can it get any better? We did a five minute exposure at negative 15 degrees Celsius and used a gain of 76 and an offset of 35, which is recommended by QHY. Uh, we gathered a total of eight hours and show, I say I show. <laughs> on M97. So in the morning I took flats uh, as the sun was rising and I transferred the files to our main computer for processing. And here you can see what each channel looked like. Uh, the nebula is very bright, especially in O3. And here is the final image. So eight hours total from our Bortle 9 backyard using the QHY 533M and our old seven nanometer filters, we would say that we're really impressed with how it came out. Yeah, it looks great. The result was awesome because this is just, you know, this is an entry level camera. So I think that we think that it did a very good job and you know, with the noise and the detail. So yeah. it looks very crisp. Uh, it's crisp. The noise was really easy to take care of. And um, yeah, I was really surprised in a good way. Crips. Crisp. Crips. I didn't say crips. You said crips. I said crisp. You said crisp then crips. I'm going to go back in the video <laughs> and I said crisp. Crisps. If I said crisp, crisps. I mean. <laughs>
Uh, it scrapes, the noise was really easy to take care of. Uh, it scrapes, scrapes. scrapes. Okay, so we kind of wish that we could have used this camera a bit earlier in the season, so we could have gotten some images of Nebulae uh, during the winter. During Galaxy season, it's always a bit tough to, to review a monochrome camera, even though we could have done an RGB, but uh, anyway, so we are overall very impressed once again with this camera, considering the price and how small it is and how easy it is to use. The Orion Nebula looks great for just two hours, and so does the Owl Nebula, which is a tricky target. The noise is not bad at all, and all the details are present all over the images. And so let's go over one last time the key points of this camera to summarize a bit. It has a square sensor, so love it or hate it. Uh, up to you, we really don't mind. It's a 14-bit camera with pixel size of 3.76 microns. The resolution is 9 megapixels, which is pretty low, although it's not really that bad. Uh, but if you do intend to have huge prints of your images, then it might not be the best for that particular goal. Uh, it has no M-Glow, which is great. Uh, it has an integrated dew heater. There are three ports in the back, USB 3 port, power port, and a four pin port for the filter wheel. And lastly, it also has a great feature added, which is this mounting ring thingy in case you want to use a camera with a lens directly and easily mount the camera to a tripod or whatever. Very cool. And also the price, of course, is $11.59 which is very reasonable for a monochrome camera. Just don't forget you'll have to get a filter wheel and filters, of course, with it. Don't forget. Okay, so if you're looking to upgrade to a monochrome camera, this QHRI 533M is great, affordable, and great for beginners. Our favorite of all time is the QHRI 600M, uh, which is... Our favorite. Our dream camera. Our baby. We also have a written review on that online, but this one is much pricier. This is more of a, a beginner uh, entry-level monochrome camera, which is also very, very good. Uh, but, you know, to compare a bit the, the resolution, this is 9 megapixels, this is 60 megapixels, so it's a huge difference. Yes, yeah, if you have the budget, go with something like the 600, which is insane. But if you are a beginner looking for a, an affordable monochrome camera to get started with, uh, get this one. This is a good option. Because a big one will also require larger filters. And also, if you're interested in getting one of uh, one of these, you can use one of our affiliate links, which is at no cost to you and really helps us out. It'll be cool. That'll be very cool of you. <laughs> and if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us through email. And once again, go through our blog post online. We have much more info there. So yeah, uh, tell us what you think about this camera. Uh, I think it's probably one of the best beginner affordable cameras as of right now. And uh, it's cool. So we'll see you guys next time and peace guys. guys.